Marines are without a doubt one of the single most powerful groups of fighters in all of One Piece, so we're going to rank the 15 absolute strongest Marines in the entire story. And we cannot start this list without including the very first person to ever truly defeat Luffy on his quest to become Pirate King. This chain-smoking, fiercely loyal Marine is Vice Admiral Smoker, who was always set up as Luffy's main Marine rival from the very start of the story. And besides effortlessly overpowering Luffy at the start of the story, he has grown strong enough to even fight on equal footing with a warlord of the sea. And you know what's even cooler? Smoker's smoke devil fruit powers were the very first Logi ability we ever came across in the story, plus I cannot imagine that he's done climbing the ranks of the marines because after Ennis Lobby, he basically just decided it was time to stop messing around and soon after, he was promoted to Vice Admiral. Which is one of the reasons I'm totally convinced that by the end of this crazy story, he'll be one of the strongest new generation marines around. However, while Smoker is on the rise, he still pales in comparison to the jaw-dropping feat of Vice Captain Tsuru. And that's because Tsuru is simply a legend in the marines whose reputation is on par with some of the strongest marines in history, including many of those who are coming up at the top of this list. In fact, she is so well respected that even the foul-mouthed Doflamingo cannot help show her some sort of respect. And while her Wash Devil Fruit isn't the strongest, she is absolutely Absolutely one of the most extraordinary tacticians in the entire Marines. And she undoubtedly played a pivotal role in developing the battle plan during the Epic War Marine Fort, and I cannot wait to talk about all the insane Marine fighters who actually took part in this war. But before that, we have the self-proclaimed best defender in the world, Sentomaru. Now this sumo-inspired character is the ultimate bodyguard of the world government's genius scientist, Dr. Vegapunk. He's a truly powerful fighter who even showed off the first use of advanced armament hockey in the story before hockey was even introduced, but you know what's even crazier? His true power lies as the commander of the marine science unit, which includes the cyborg Pacifista and the genetically enhanced Seraphim clones as well. Like, seriously, anyone who can control these mind-boggling powers can basically win entire wars all on their own. However, while Sentomaru eventually got washed by these relentless government agents, this next marine put up a way tougher fight against the same enemies. And honestly, for the longest time, we didn't even know that DS Drake, better known as X Drake, was actually a Marine. And that's because he was actually a secret undercover agent working for the secret Marine organization, SWORD. And let me tell you, this man is an absolute monster, literally, who became a world-famous pirate equal to pre-Time Skip Luffy. He's an incredible fighter who dual wields this impressive axe and a sword and can also turn into this enormously powerful dinosaur with his Allosaurus Devil Fruit. And to top it all off, he got so strong that he actually became one of the Yonko Kaido's top officers before flipping sides and helping turn the tides during the battle on Onigashima. However, Drake isn't even the strongest secret marine in Sword, and that's because at number 11, we have the character who might very well be the strongest marine ever by the time he reaches his full power. That's right, this right here is the future fleet admiral, but I'm being honest, while well, Kobe started out as a pretty pitiful weakling, his growth rate in the story is simply ridiculous. I mean, he went from being this crying little kid to an absolute chat in just a few years, and at this point can even stand up to Yonko crews like Blackbeards without backing down. And while he doesn't have a devil fruit, yet at least, he's a master of observation hockey, seems to show hints of Congress hockey, and I wouldn't be surprised if he eventually became the strongest marine ever. However, he'll have to wait to climb the marine ranks, which is also the sad fate for these two marines right here. And you may have even forgotten that Gion and Tokikage actually exist, and we certainly certainly don't have any impressive feats for them, but these two vice admirals were specifically mentioned as candidates to take the two vacant admiral spots during the time skip. Which, even though we know barely anything about them, must mean that they are incredibly strong if they barely miss the cuts to be considered at the same level as these next marines in the ranking. Because this brings us to the incredibly hyped admiral tier, which has always been portrayed as absurdly more powerful than your everyday marine. And at the bottom of the 
Admiral tier is the meme, the myth, the legend, Admiral Greenbull. And even though he's constantly made fun of for being scared of Shanks and being an Akainu fanboy, he is undoubtedly still very much powerful with his Forest Logia Devil Fruit, which he can actually use to grow deadly vines and giant forests in the blink of an eye. And in fact, he even took on the entire Guardians of Wano and easily fought the commanders of the Revolutionary Army. And the man fighting right beside him, or ironically sometimes against him in the clash with the revolutionary is the blind admiral Fujitora. However, don't be fooled by him not being able to see because this man will straight up drop a meteor on your head with his gravity devil fruit powers. And this devil fruit is one of the truly most OP powers in One Piece, which is why it only barely missed the cut for my top five devil fruits ranking. For example, Fujitora can use its powers to fly, effortly crush opponents, lift giant heaps of rubble and combine gravity with his sword to create devastating attacks. Put this on top of his observation hockey, which is so strong that he can basically see by sensing the people around him. However, his strength isn't even the most important part of his character because Fujitora is also a man on a mission to rid the marines and world government of corruption. He frequently disobeys orders that he doesn't think are good and he even desperately worked to disband the entire warlord system after he saw what Doflamingo did to the country of Dressrosa. And unlike the next marine on this tier list, if you want to stay free of world government corruption, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more One Piece content just like this, because unfortunately for this former marine admiral, he never had that opportunity because he left the marines after his crew was completely wiped out and the government didn't care at all. And while you might rightfully say that Zaffir never officially actually appeared in the manga, he is the main antagonist of Vilm Z, although it is basically confirmed that his backstory is actually canon. And that's because during his time as a marine, he became a famous trainer who brought up many of the marine prodigies still to come on this list. And with everything we see in this film, he certainly is a devastatingly powerful fighter on par with many of the most legendary older generations of the marines. Zaffir mainly brawls with his fists, including his super destructive mechanical arm and is a master of hockey and the Rokushiki techniques as well. Though even this overpowered master eventually got taken out by his student because Admiral Kizaru showed up at the end of film Z and wiped out his former teacher. However, don't feel bad for Zaffir because Kizaru is also a true weapon of destruction who might actually own the title of defeating the most pirates in the entire story. This user of the light fruit can kick at light speed and shoot out incredibly powerful beams of light, which he used to almost take out the entire worst generation of pirates back on Saba Odi. And honestly, I would love to have even a fraction of this man's confidence because he straight up waited to go to Wano to take care of Big Mom and Kaido by himself. Like what a madman this lad. He's also the only Marine to remain an Admiral both before and after the time skip and is undoubtedly going to play a major role in the future of the story, including on Egghead Island. Which is also coincidentally precisely what we're all hoping for Kong, who could either be the strongest Marine in history or just some random side dude who loves his oversized fish tank in his office. And while that second option is highly unlikely because he used to to be the fleet admiral before Sengoku, I mean, come on, can we get any remarkable feats for this man? I even considered putting him much lower in my ranking because even I sometimes forget about this dude in the first place because he has done literally nothing in the story despite his impressive resume. That's because what we do know for a fact is that he's the current world government commander in chief who has complete control of both the marines and cypherpole agencies. Plus, he was the fleet admiral during Raj's era, so we should expect him to be strong since the fleet admiral is promoted from the admirals and you only get to that point being ultra super strong. And I mean also, he's one of the buffest looking dudes in the entire story, but that cloud can only take him that far. And maybe the only time that we ever saw Kong get actually angry was when the next marine on this list turned in his resignation. And it may surprise you that I have ranked Sengoku over Kong, but in my opinion, Sengoku has always been massively underrated. Just because he gets overshadowed by the number one figure on this list. However, this Afro man was the former fleet admiral for a reason. He fought against Whitebeard
Whitebeard and Roger in their primes, he is a great tactician who was smart enough to outmaneuver Whitebeard during Marineford, plus he has the Golden Buddha Legendary Devil Fruit, which can send out giant shockwaves and has always stood out to me as something that might have some other super secret powers that we have yet to see in the story. Which I know is kind of hard to believe, but you will probably be even more shocked by who is ranked above Sengoku on this list. And that's because next up is Aokiji, the Ice Fruit Logia user. And while he may not be a Marine anymore after joining the Blackbeard Pirates, we just have to include him here because of the possibility that he might be working undercover. And this man is an absolute god. His Devil Fruit powers are so OP that he nearly wiped out the Straw Hat crew after Skypea. He can easily fight on par with the Yonko, and even a super powerful character like Doflamingo did not want to mess around with him. And what's even more impressive is that he fought for 10 whole days against the Kainu, who's our next strongest marine in my ranking. And this epic clash of ice and the Kainu's magma, these two literally changed the terrain of an entire island. However, as you know, Akainu eventually won this legendary clash, so we just have to rank him slightly higher here. And it is fully deserved, as he is what the author called one of the most destructive powers in the entire story with his Magma Devil Fruit. I mean, this power is literally so strong that the Kainu could literally punch off half of Whitebeard's head. Along with a ton of other very impressive accomplishments, Akainu is the current fleet admiral and just has to be one of the final antagonists of the entire story. Which is honestly insane that there is another even more powerful marine, but I simply could not rank this one any lower. He was the rival of Goldie Roger, took out Roxy Zebek, and even wanted to kill Akainu himself during the war at Marine. And I'm of course talking about Monkey D. Garp, and we see just how insanely powerful he is in the recent chapters, when this old Garp, who is not even in his prime anymore, basically wiped out half of a Yonko's crew, plus an admiral level character by himself, and used his advanced Conqueror's Hockey to destroy the entire town with a single punch. And while this particular moment showed off Garp's ridiculous power, because it happened so recently, it didn't make the cut for my top 13 Conqueror Hockey moments moments in the story, but if you want to see which legendary moments did make the list, you can watch that video right here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.